Just wait, not Jose. MVP, here you go. Two fights in, International Fight Week, massive platform, man. How is this uh, UFC thing going for you so far? Yeah, you know what? I'm absolutely loving it, man. I, I have to say the, first and foremost, the team here, the, the you know, all the back, the, the back, backroom staff, unbelievable. You know, feel so welcomed here. Uh, it feels like I've been here many years already, you know? And I think, you know, a lot of people have been anticipating it, but it, it it feels nice now that I'm here. So, yeah, no, I'm enjoying the journey so far. I love it. Solid debut. I know that maybe you felt like you could have done a little bit more or what have you. But I guess what were the biggest surprises or lessons that you took out that maybe you, you weren't expecting even as a veteran like you are? Um, no, no real surprises. Again, I like, to just, I like to put, you know, peg things just on myself. There was just certain moments during that fight I could have pressed a little bit more. I could have landed a little bit more um, and potentially take him out of the fight. But he's, he's one tough guy man I can't I seriously I'm, some of the stuff I hit him with I was looking in his eyes like oh damn you're still here all right cool let's <laughs> let's keep going but yeah he's a tough guy but um I'm usually quite hard on myself anyway uh but yeah definitely it's still a great great first fight second fight now top level opponent Ian how much kind of a younger guy right up and coming right how, how much of his career had you followed up to this point given that you know you guys were in different organizations none to be to be honest I, I I'm a very lazy uh, person when it comes to watching uh, the fights. It's only I'm a bit of a casual when it comes to the, the UFC and just other uh, organizations. Um, a lot of times I hear it. When I get back to the gym, someone's like, oh, have you seen this guy and that guy? And, and if there's enough talk, then I'll go back and watch. But um, outside of the, you know, the, the main names, uh, I'm a, yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit uh, lazy with that. So I haven't watched loads. I've seen clips of him before. But it, it's weird. In all honesty, it's weird to me because this type of a fight, had it been outside the UFC, most people would have been like, you're fighting a can. Most people would have been like, oh, yeah, why are you fighting this guy? Uh, and just had, would have had so many different things to say. And it's the exact same fight in the UFC. And everyone's opinions have changed now. Like, you're fighting top level guys and this and that. And, you, and I remember. At, at one point, I, you know, I had a lot of people saying, you know, I wouldn't be able to contend in the top 10. Now I'm fighting someone that's ranked seventh, and a lot of people are like, yeah, you're going to kick his ass. I'm like, <laughs> it changes so, so drastically. Um, but yeah, for me, it's just another fight. I just, you know, I'm, I, this is what I enjoy the most, you know. The, and then fight day, I just try to be me, try to be as entertaining as possible, try to get the knockout, and then, you know, go and have a holiday. <laughs> Your whole career, we've had to ask opponents, like, how'd you get ready for MVP, man? He's so unique, right? How much do you have to get ready for other people? Like, do you, how much do you change your approach, your game plan, your training specific to what the other guy presents? Um, I have to get ready to be better than myself the last time. I have to get ready to just be a better athlete, a better all-round mixed martial artist than, 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 than previous. Um, for me, that's the main focus every single time is, is Yes, I have to make certain adjustments and changes for an opponent, but um, I think I've used this example before. If I'm, you know, those, those driving games, you know, you, you race around the racetrack and the second time it's a ghost of your last score and you're trying to beat yourself. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. I'm, I'm, I'm in there just trying to be better than myself. Last thing for me, you, you talk about how quickly things change, right? Weren't in the UFC, could never contend. <laughs> you go here, you're 2-0, you've beaten a top-ranked guy. Do you start calling shots? I mean, do you start saying, you know, this is what I deserve next, you know, give this to me? <laughs> nah, that's, you know, that's just not my personality. I, um, yes, I'm, I'm going to push for certain things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask for certain things. I'm going to, you know, try and fight my case, fight my corner. But um, I don't need to be demanded. I think my, my performances speak for itself. And then I also, the fans, they're not there after as well. You know, you guys there after as well will then, you know, be the, the, the added pressure that people you know, the, the, the right people need to, to make those decisions. So, yeah. Michael, you said uh, if this was outside the UFC, people would say, oh, you're fighting a can. Is that based on Ian Gary or is that based on the standards and expectations people put on you? Um, good question. I think, I think it's standards and ex uh, expectations put on myself, but also 
just how warped people's views are of reality. And, I, and I've been saying for many, many years, I spar a lot of UFC guys. I already know that I'm at that level. Like, it, I, I wasn't, I didn't come here to prove it to anybody else. It's, it's, a, it's a great cherry on top, but I wasn't, I wasn't coming here to prove to everybody else. I already knew I could do that. Um, but what I'm saying is like, for example, the likes of, let's say, uh, Ross Houston, you know, I remember when getting that fight, the, the negative pushback that I got from it, but they came from the same place. They did pr pretty much the same things. The difference is one went to, you know, Bellator, one went to UFC. And there's a different, I, I understand the magnitude of UFC and the branding and stuff, so I get that, but I feel like people sometimes are fooled by just the branding and not the actual, the fighters itself, and they're not actually analyzing fighters and fights themselves. Yeah. It feels like whenever Ian fights, more of the conversation is about him as a person and his personality rather than his skills. Yeah. Do you have to try hard not to get wrapped up in that yourself, right? And like, look at this as a contest in a fight rather than like, oh, this guy annoys people a lot. Um, well, I, I like to just be objective and I'll go based on how I feel. He is annoying. <laughs> um, he is annoying. Um, does it change me or does it mean that I have to adjust myself? No, I don't. I, I never like anybody else, uh, their energy affecting my energy. So I can be objective and, uh, and you know, state my opinion, but I'm always going to carry myself the way I, 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 you know, I deem correct. Um, so, yeah, and no, I like, you know, uh, like I said, I think he is, he's a annoying character. That's a character he wants to go with. He, I think he enjoys being a bit of the villain. Um, so, yeah, but it's good on him. It's, it's, it's gotten him this far. Uh, I just think it's fake. Uh, like a PBL. Do you, uh, <coughs> you just said that you don't like people's energy affecting your energy. Do you think that mindset helps you when you go into like the press conference on Thursday and he inevitably talks some shit that you're able to just brush it off? Yeah, 100%. 100%. I think uh, just as a man, forget even being a martial artist, as a man, you need to be able to hold your stance uh, confidently without being triggered by emotions, being triggered by things around you. Um, and as a martial artist, I think it's even more important. We should be trained in that. And I've been I've raised in martial arts since three. So uh, yeah, that for me, that's always gonna be my stance. Yes, even if I do something, believe it's intentional. Yeah, I don't do anything without thought process in what I wanna do. Right here. Um, is it almost a trip that, like, it took you this long to get into the UFC, but Ian Gary made his just pro MMA debut the same night you fought Paul Daly. So he's still just relatively new to this sport in general. Yeah, he's, um, he's, he's new and he's done, he's done really, really well. And you've seen it in, with so many people, um, you know, quick rises. Uh, I think a lot of the times with quick rises, you get quick falls as well. Um, I've been in this a long time, a lot of experience, and gradually, slowly, slowly, built my way up to where I am now, and I'm still growing. So, um, yeah, I, I have nothing against either or, just from experience and from what I've seen, I, I'd prefer to do what I've done now, and I think everything's time and position this way for a reason. He's declared himself as uh, this new generation of strikers uh, in MMA. I'm curious, like, when you actually break down his striking, is it relatively new, or is it just kind of same old thing you've seen in MMA? Did he, did he say what it's based on? He just said I'm in one of his post fight, like in the octagon after one of his wins, he's like, I'm the new generation of striker here in the UFC. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why it's big. Let's say if he gave a bit of an example as to why, because from what I see, he's a competent striker. He's got good distance control. He understands, you know, when and where to throw his punches, his kicks. But has it, it's not anything that is new. I'd say I'm new in terms of I can find many replicas of Ian Gary, try and find replicas of myself. You'll, you may find one, and it won't be exact. So that can't be a new wave of anything. Uh, he's also been training uh, at shoot -to boxing down in Brazil, which is widely known as they're in these wild like brawls like Vanderlei and Shogun back in the day, Charles Oliveira now. But like you said, he kind of controls distance a lot. So are you expecting kind of a new Ian Gary, or is it at this point in his career like he is who he is no matter where he kind of trains? Yeah, I think he is who he is. Um, and yeah, I think his style is his style. There's going to be certain things that he's really good at that he, regardless of what I always say, I train for 
figuring out people's best abilities, not worst abilities. So I'm not expecting any change. I'm expecting what you are good at. I'm expecting to see that multiple times during the fight. If I have something in preparation for what you're good at, I'm likely to see that more than if I'm like, oh yeah, that last fight, his hand was down, so I can probably catch him out there. He does a camp. The camp, you know, his coaches are good. They fix that. I get in there and I'm like, oh shit, like I don't, <laughs> that opportunity is not there. So, but there's aspects that he's gonna be good at, regardless of any new information, he's gonna resort back to that. When I pile pressure on him, he will throw those best things out. If he's piling pressure on me, he will throw those best things out. He will always go back to what he's good at. Can I get your thoughts on the main event between Yuri and Alex? It's a great replacement, a great replacement fight. Um, both, I've, uh, I've actually um, uh, sparred with Yuri before, like ages ago. Um, awkward guy, long, big puncher, um, you know, just fires from crazy angles. Um, and then obviously we've seen the devastating power that Pereira has. It's just, it just makes for a great fight. Um, considering the fight we lost was, you know, was so big. It was, I think UFC done an, an exceptional job putting something like this on in such a short space of time. So yeah, well, I'm, I look forward to it. And I'm actually happy that I'm on the beginning of the card because last time I was still doing media and like trying to look at the screen to see, you know, the main event. So this time I, I get to finish the media stuff, sit down and actually enjoy the fight. And last one for me, uh, they just announced one of your former foes, Mike Perry, is going to fight. Jake Paul, what do you think of that, that matchup in boxing? You know what, I actually have to, for the first time, I think, uh, uh, rate Jake Paul for the decision because it's a tough fight. You know, I've, I've been in there with him myself, very different, but he's just a hard person to kill and he's a person that will keep coming forward. So I think depending on how long, how many rounds there are, uh, it's, it's a tough fight for Jake Paul, and we know Jake Paul has power, but I think his power is in you know the first three rounds. After that, uh, if he doesn't get um, Perry out, which I don't believe he will within the first three, uh, he's gonna he'll probably lose lose that fight. And just piggybacking off predictions, uh, we do have the title fight in your division uh, coming up uh, later this month uh, between Leon Edwards and Bilal Muhammad. How do you see that fight playing out? Um, I think both fighters are slow pace fighters and it suits them sl slow pace but I think it suits Bilal more because of his grappling ability because it gives him time and space to think about exactly when he's going to line up the shots and so on and so forth but people underestimate Leon's wrestling ability as we've seen him with Usman taking Usman down for one defending takedowns with you know him Colby so on and so forth so once that side has been figured out and there's more rounds left, I think Leon's striking ability will start to play a big, a massive role in that fight as it goes on. I actually can see it still going decision. I just think the more effective fight, uh, strike, sorry, are gonna come from Leon as, as the fight goes on versus from Bilal who will probably get a little bit, ti a bit more tired from the lactic and obviously he's not, he's gotten better in his striking but that's not his thing. So um, it's a great fight, but uh, I would edge it just towards Leon. What have you made of Ian Gary overall in the UFC, not outside the cage, but just strictly inside the cage, his performances, his wins? What, what have you made of his run so far? Very confident uh, young man who's doing really well, has massive belief in himself, um, and just made one bad decision in accepting the fight with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you call him the fake Conor McGregor. What, what's sort of behind that? Obviously, you can see how much, you know, he's been inspired by Conor McGregor. And I, and I get it. Many fighters away from Ireland have been massively inspired by Conor McGregor. He was there to, you know, when he first started to see someone like Conor McGregor blow up on the scene and be the, you know, the giant, you know, figure that he is in MMA now. So I understand the inspiration. But trying to do exactly what he does is what I call fake. Because your personality may not actually be like that, which is why people are not necessarily resonating with you. Whereas with Connor, you're trying to play the exact same role. With Connor, people love Connor. People like these massive fan base. With you, people hate you. And I think it's because we can all feel when something is not real, when it's not authentic. And I feel it's not authentic with Gary. Therefore, he's fake Connor McGregor, the BBL version.
Um, and then also, like, kind of piggybacking off that, um, a, a lot of fans you mentioned don't like Ian Gary. Have you found that you've had a lot of support, maybe from people you wouldn't normally get, just because they want to see Gary lose? Have you saw any of that on social media or anything? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Those people, I, I, I don't care for. Though they're fans that will chop and change based on like likes and dislikes. True MMA fans will pick somebody that they like for whatever reason, and regardless of their ups and downs in their career, I am a fan of you. You know, and I think that is a, a when you are a true supporter of someone, it's not based on success. It's based on, you know, certain deeper meanings that you get from that person, deeper inspirations that you get from that person, from watching that person. That is when you're a true fan of somebody. We saw Michael Chandler come over from Bellator into the UFC and get a title shot. Do you feel like with a finish here or or even just a win um, that you could potentially get a title shot here just because Gary hasn't lost in the octagon? Yeah, um, I, I. I definitely think a, a win puts me, just puts me in the position where I'm in title shot reach. And that's where I want to be because I, in my eyes, I still need one more fight to shore it up. But when you're in that top five, it only takes one injury. It only takes one, some, you know, something that's happened that he doesn't, that person doesn't, you know, is unable to make the fight. And you're sat there in top five. Yeah, I want you next, you know? And the noise that I know I can make and can continue make. Uh, making, um, I, I, I likely, if I position myself like that, I'm likely the person that they're going to want to choose for a title fight. And just last one for me, what do you make of Shavkat Rachmanov in your division? He's another guy that's sort of hovering around that title spot. Um, a lot of fighters, some fighters want to fight him, some don't. Uh, what do you sort of make of his skill set? He's tough, man. You can tell he's tough. You can, I can see he's got a tight squeeze on him. Um, there are, he, he gets hit a lot, which is, I think, can only last so long, but for right now, he's in that place where he's, you know, he's tough enough to kind of do that. Great style of fighting, great all-rounded uh, grappling and, stuff, and so on and so forth. And I think that would be a great fight as well. Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey uh, I know you've got more important things to focus on at the moment, but have you been following England at all in the Euros? Oh, yeah, no, of course, of course. You've got to uh, support England no matter how annoying they are. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and I've been saying this as well. I genuinely believe the team that we have, the, the group of youngsters that we have on England are exceptional. The, man the manager, unfortunately, Gareth, is not good enough to, to take that team to where we need them to win. They have the ability to do so, but then you've got a guy that's playing people out of position, uh, bringing people. For me, that doesn't, didn't really make any sense. You've got Harry Kane that's not really doing much, and he's just guaranteed to get um, you know, uh, football. Uh, time on the pitch, uh, he spends more time defending than actually attacking, and yet you bring some of the young, younger guys that come on, and you see that there's way more balls that are like getting crossed into the box because people are driving towards defenders, which pushes that that defense back. It just feels like we try to score a goal, and then we become almost like the Mourinho effect. You just try to park the bus, and it's embarrassing, honestly speaking, with the type of speed that we have in that team, talent that we have in that team, it is embarrassing. Um, and yeah, something needs to change or yeah, I just think we're just going to be saying it's coming home and then being disappointed every single time. So <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask, is, is it coming home? Sorry? I was about to ask, is it coming uh, I, home? I'm, you know, I'm never going to say that <laughs> statement <laughs> positively because honestly speaking, I think that's our jinx, man. Let's get rid of that saying right now. <laughs> let's, let's get rid of that saying and hopefully we get better results. <laughs> and um, from one show, showboat, uh, showboater to another, have you seen much of Benjamin Whitaker, the boxer? Yes. Yeah, how do you rate his yeah, showboating? I'll, I was actually there for his first, uh, his first fight, um, uh, major fight with Sky. Um, great, man. He's so entertaining. I think, uh, you know, watching his last fight, the issue that he's going to have is he needs a little bit more power, finishing power, mm. which... Um, is not there. Entertaining, yes. You know, some of his head movement, yes, beautiful. Uh, he dips in the wrong place sometimes, which can get him caught out. Um, I think sometimes if you spend a bit too much time just focusing on the show Bolton, you know, especially when you, I think he's doing it for the wrong reason. You know, when you get that crowd reaction, he's like, oh, I'm going to do some more of this. But when he's, you know, as he goes up in competition, it's going to get harder to, to do and you're going to keep trying to chase that. That's not going to win you the fights. You know, so he needs to find, he's got some be beautiful, his hands are amazing. So just sometimes slip one, slip another, land shots. 
don't slip, 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 because eventually you can't you can't win fights just on defense only. So, but yeah, exceptional fight. Exceptional you see, you got head butted in that last fight. Just disgusting. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Obviously, the guy, you know, was frustrated. He's he's being himself, not taking the Mickey. But you, I'm sorry, but I, me personally, he, he head butted the guy and elbowed the guy. I personally just wouldn't, I wouldn't have you fighting on the show again. Yeah. If that's how, if if you can't manage your emotions, I wouldn't have you fighting on any any show. Thanks, Mike. No problem. Uh, um, how difficult of a choice was it to pass up on Manchester and fight at, at UFC 303? Um, yeah, no, uh, not, it was not difficult. I don't care where I fight. I, I feel like it, it made more sense to just be in Manchester, Irish guy, British guy, you know, uh, 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 home soil, as well as it would have given me that little bit of extra time because I had literally just come back off holiday did some some training and stuff, you know. I was I was in Dubai, um, um, working over there. Some of the guys, but in general, I kind of just been off, just relaxing my body. Um, so I thought it just felt, made, made the most sense. And I had been told already previously that it was gonna be more likely uh, Manchester. But does it bother me? No, because yeah, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. It's not my last fight. So the UK will come, it, it will happen, and I'm probably at a better time. Like I said, I'm hoping when it's uh, me versus Leon Edwards and it's, a, it's for a belt, you know, I want to bring that. Uh, that's when it's coming home, yeah? <laughs> and then finally, um, how nice is it seeing these, these, these kickboxers, professional kickboxers come over to M uh, MMA? Obviously, Alex Pereira is the one that's uh, like, you know, the, the uh, Golden Goose right now, but do you, do you foresee more and more and more coming over? A hundred percent. I'm starting to see more and more just youngsters coming through and uh, with a kickboxing style. And like, in, in all honesty, I think regardless of anything else and biasly speaking a little bit, but regardless of anything else, people come to our shows to watch a knockout and you don't get that from a grappling, from a grappling match. Uh, I'm not against it. I love, I love jujitsu. I love wrestling. It's an important part of the game. I just, you know, people, we, you know, we know what people want to see. And I think the youngsters are also becoming aware of that and understanding that those are the kind of things that shoots you up the ladder a lot quicker. So, yeah, definitely seeing more and more. And it's, and it's, it's exciting. Michael, uh, right here. When you spoke to Farah Hanoon a couple of weeks ago, you said you think this could be a two minute fight. And uh, Ian said in response to that, you know, he doesn't think you're going to be able to hit him and stuff. Uh -huh. Is there any world in your mind where this is even competitive or do you think whichever way it goes, it's going to be pretty fast and furious? No, I was only, I was only messing about what it is. I, all I know is, he, I don't know why he doesn't think to get, he's going to get hit because he gets hit a lot in many of his fights. So it's not, I can say that because the majority of my fights, I, I very rarely get hit clear, uh, clean. So... It makes more sense that I say that. Um, do I think it's going to be a quick fight? Not necessarily. Is, 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 is it a competitive fight? Yes. I think everybody at this level, I personally, in my mind, say they are the best in the world. They, regardless of the fun that I like to have, they are the best in the world. I'm going to be dealing with uh, the, the best kickboxer in front of me. And this is what motivates me to be that much better. Um, so yeah, 100%, um, uh, I, I take him seriously. I like to play around, have jokes, but I do take him seriously. I do respect his talents. I just think I'm better than him. Just over here, just over here. Um, Ian was asked when you were making your debut, you know, how he thought you were going to do against Kevin Holland, and he kind of wrote you off and, and didn't think you were going to win your debut. Why do you think he wrote you off? Did, do you think he saw you as a threat to, to the division? I think everybody sees me as a threat to the division. I think, you know, um, I feel like I've done exceptionally well in my career by way of making noise. There's so many guys, even when I've come here and I've bumped into fighters, like well-established fighters, they're like, man, I've been watching you for years. Like, I, I, I've never known that. But they, they, I've, I obviously make a lot of noise. So the um, second I, I'm over here, there's going to be a lot of people that are, are going to try and push that to one side as much as possible and hope that it's somebody else's problem and that somebody else deals with me. And he was hoping that Kevin Holland dealt with me so he doesn't have to hear my name again. And, you know, he, he keeps climbing and moving forward away from having to deal with this headache, this Rubik's Cube of a fight that's long. So I just think, yeah, it was a bit of an, an avoidant move. Um, and he's still, still trying to play that card, which is stupid because he's fighting me. But, um, yeah, I just think it's more um, it hope that someone else deals with, has to deal with me. 
and he said previously in, in another interview that he thinks you're going to play it safe and cautious. Um, you know, what do you think about that statement, and, and how, how are you going to be approaching this fight? I fight with my hands down. How is that safe and cautious? <laughs> that's, that's just not safe and cautious. Like, uh, my whole life, everyone's like, please, man, put your hands up, man, please. Like, that. <laughs> I fight with my hands down. That like, Nothing about what I do is safe and cautious. Like, it's just not a thing. And, of course, you've always had, you know, like, themes coming into the fight. You've done, like, the Pokemon, and mm -hmm. even, even in your debut, you, you dance to the Octagon. Have you got anything planned for the, this weekend? BBL Gary. <laughs> BBL Gary. <laughs> Just yeah, the come on, man. I'm giving it to you guys. I put it out <laughs> early. Theme, right? I want you guys to sing as I'm walking in. That's why I, you know, I dropped it earlier, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the theme this time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you.